Good evening. It is uh, our sunset service. I hope that everyone's uh, enjoyed the service so far. Uh, it's very interesting. Today's topic is about living people. And as uh, Minister Patrick has talked about, you know, what does it mean to really be living? Okay, and that's what I talk about today. So I hope that everyone kind of get that in your mind right now. What does it mean to really be living more than anything else? Okay, so let's talk about living people. Okay, now the one thing that we learn through the scriptures right, is that you can't always look at things from one point of view, but you have to always see things from two perspectives, right? One is like, you know, one is a very physical perspective, and one is more internal, one is more deep, one is more spiritual, right? So let's talk about living people for a second. So a living person physically, right, it's exactly what everyone, everyone here in this room is, right? So everyone applies to a living person physically, right? Because you're breathing, uh, you expend calories, uh, you use that energy on multiple different things, and you can probably get up and walk and, you know, run around and do other things like this. This is a living thing, right? Now, the second type of living that you always hear, right? And this is not just in church. This is like in life, right? Is when someone asks you like the question like, are you really living? right? You've heard it before. Are you really living, right? Are you like, you know, it's, it's like that very famous quote. Well, it's not very famous. It's from the movie Braveheart, right? Before Braveheart is going to be given this poison and, and, and the, this lover of his is like going, please, you're going to, you're, they're going to torture you tomorrow. And what they actually do is they cut open his stomach and they take like his intestines out and they roll it out. Okay. But that, that was a torture they were doing. So this girl knows that he's going to go through the worst suffering ever. And she's like, I can't bear to see you suffer. Take this and die the quick death. And he turns to her, you know, Mel Gibson, right, with those glossy eyes. He's like, he's like every man lives. No, every man dies, but not every man lives, right? And it's really, you know, it's like it makes you think, right? And it's very interesting, too, because we think about it also, like, are you really living, right? Like your life right now, right? And you can tell when you look at, look at, you know, when certain things happen in your life, right? For instance, someone who is really living, right? You know, like in the world, someone who's like checking off all, you know, their bucket list, right? They went skydiving, then they went cliff diving, and then they did like underwater diving, free diving, and they start doing all these different things. You're like, whoa, what's this guy doing, right? What's this person doing? And you talk to them and they're telling you about, yeah, you know, like, I just realized that life is short and, you know, we got to really live it to the, you know, to, to the, to the max, right? So I went swimming with sharks yesterday. It almost bit off my leg, but I was living, right? And this almost happened to me here, but I was living. I went in a race car. I did all these different things. And he's basically saying that, oh, I'm living. And then what happens is people get inspired by that. They do. Right? They get inspired. People taking risks. People doing things that they never would have done before. Right? You know, doing stand-up comedy or whatever it is. Right? And they do it and they look at that and say, whoa! Am I really living? And they start to think about that a lot and they start to change the way they live their life. Right? And one of the biggest changes that a lot of people do, most people, one of the biggest changes people do in life is actually not endangering your life. It's actually making yourself healthier. Right? It's like starting to exercise, eating more healthy. Now, when you talk to this person and say, well, what made you change your life? What made you want to live your, like, really live your life? And they'll tell you something even crazier. They'll be like, you know what? I got cancer. I got cancer, so I had to change. Right? I had no choice. I had a cancer. You know, I got high blood pressure. I got this going on in my life. And, I, you know, I was ruining my marriage. These things were happening, and I realized I'm not really living, and I got to live the right way. And you see, everyone's got some type of thing that's a catalyst that's pushing them towards trying to live better. There's a catalyst that pushes you, right? Now, we think, just, oh, wow, one of the catalysts is you see someone else doing something better, living a better life than what you're living right now. And you say, wow, that's amazing. You see someone helping the poor, you feel amazing, like, oh, I want to do that too. Or you go through something in your life where maybe your mother got cancer. Maybe someone else in your family is really sick. And you look at that person, you say, oh, you know what? I can't live like that either. And you decide to change your life too. But you have to think about this even deeper, right? Because we're going to take this now into your spiritual life. The scripture we're going to use today is James chapter 2, verse 17. Okay? James chapter 2, verse 17. Let's all read this together, right? 
In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. As we're coming here and we're living a life of faith, the thing I want to ask you, the question I want to ask you even bigger than what you're, you're thinking about right now is, are you really living life, right? Is, is your faith actually living? Right? And, and what the scripture is telling us here is, you know, this is kind of like, this is reality is, how much you're living is dependent upon what you're actually doing. That's what it's dependent upon. Right? It says, don't just think about faith. Don't just believe in your head that you have faith in God, that you believe this or believe that, that you're going to be saved and go to heaven. You have all these are different, you know, as Minister Patrick talked about, this resurrection. Don't just believe it. You gotta actually live it. Like you actually gotta do something about it, right? Because all of us here, you guys can sit down right now about right all the things you did last week, and you probably think to yourself, "I could have done so many more things. I could have done so many more things." Now, faith. What makes faith living, or what can start pushing you to start living in faith? Okay. Now, what would push you? Is it seeing someone else living a real life of faith and you look at them and say, wow, that's amazing faith. I want to do this. Oh, that, that person's amazing. I want to live a life of faith like that. Or are you going to go through some type of like crisis where you, you're, you're going to, you know, where you're on the verge of losing, losing hope in life. You're depressed. You go through this, this bad stage where things happen in life and you're like, I don't want to live anymore. Before you turn around. But there's actually something more powerful than this. Right? And you got to understand this very, very carefully. It's like, what is more powerful than this that would turn me to change and start living a real life of faith? Or like a living faith. Right? Because living, you know, even for us physically speaking, just purely physically, you're either doing two things. Phys like purely physically. You're either living or you're dying. It's one of the two. Right? They usually say, like, you know, by the time you hit 25, all your cells start dying from that point on, right? Which means from that point on, you're just dying, right? Or you're still multiplying and you're growing, right? I'm dying right now. I just want to let you know that. Okay, I'm dying, right? So we're doing one of two things, right? You're either inching closer towards life or inching closer towards death. And what compels you to live, like really live, like faith-wise? Like, what is it? What do you mean? Now, let me give you a story, and I'm sure this is a story that many of you heard. Very, very, it's, I, I think it's a famous story because I've heard this multiple times on multiple occasions. It's a story about twin brothers, okay? So these twin brothers there, what happens is uh, these twin brothers, uh, both of them raised good family, and then what eventually happens is both of them live like opposite lives, completely opposite lives, right? One, you know, lives a good life, becomes, you know, works really hard, gets his degree, masters, whatever it is, becomes like really rich, nice, you know, just he has everything he wants, right? Good guy. The second person uh, doesn't quite, you know, make it that way. He just goes completely opposite. You know, drugs, alcohol, right? You know, stealing, you know, beating people up, just like, you know, he's, he's just doing all the things on the exact op opposite spectrum. And uh, one day, this brother on the opposite end just does the wrong thing, right? And it's like this involuntary manslaughter, right? So what happens is, is he has to go to jail, okay? He has to go to jail for a long time, okay? So let's say it's about, let's just say it's about 10 years, okay? So this person has to go to jail. Now what happens is the other twin brother hears about what's going on with his brother. And uh, in this story, right, regardless if it's true or not, in this story what happens is uh, the other brother who lives a good life uh, goes to jail for his brother. He goes to jail for the twin brothers. He goes to jail for his brother and the other brother's allowed to live in the house and kind of live with the money that the other person has, his other brother has made. Okay. And it, the story actually just ends there. It just kind of ends there. Right. It's like, and so it's kind of like the question would be like, what would you do? If you were the person and your brother came and sacrifices for you and he gives you this life where you can live and start all over again, this fresh second chance, ugh, right? We're like, oh, okay, you know, and most people are like, whoa, you know, I change or I do this or this, but there's, there's no ending to it. There's not anyone saying that, hey, this is what happened, right? 
But here's a question I give to you is if you're in that situation is there's something bigger than this is this. What happens after the 10 years when that brother comes out? Right? That's the bigger question. What happens? Because he eventually gets out. It's not like it's not for life. The person gets out. Eventually he comes out. And when he comes out, you're going to see one of two things. It's either you are so grateful and thankful that you had a second chance, that someone else did something, sacrificed everything, even though they had everything. They sacrificed everything for you so that you can live a better life, that you can change, you can start all over. Or he sees the same person there was before. And those are two things that people are going to see. Now, why would I bring this up? Because one of the most powerful things you have to understand, the reason why this is, this is even more powerful than something that happens to you is because it's not about you anymore. It's not someone didn't have to do what they did for you to live or for you to have a second chance. You see, living life, right, actually becoming like really, really living, right? Someone, someone you know, my pastor... My, my, my pastor said this. He says, do you know what the strength of faith is based on? The strength of your faith. The strength of your life. What is it based on? He says, in the same way, like the strength of like a rock or strength of uh, the hardness of a rock, right? The hardest rock is a diamond, right? The hardness of it. And that's like, oh, this hardness determines what kind of rock it is. If it's this hardness, it's actually a diamond. And he says, you know, there's a strength of faith you have to understand too is, where's your, what is your strength of faith? And he says, the strength of faith that you have is dependent purely on your sincerity and your earnestness. Like how much you really want it. That's the thing. How much you want to live what is going to compel you to do something you never, like, you don't really like to do, right? Three things, or I'll give you even two things that people who are super healthy have in common is they prioritize exercise and they never miss it no matter how tired, no matter how much sleep they had. They prioritize it. That's how much they want it. They want it more than anything else. Number two is they don't oversleep because they, that's the time they lose to fulfill or accomplish what they want to do that day. That's absolute earnestness and absolute sincerity. What we're looking at right now is, what is the strength of your faith at this moment? What are you looking at that is propelling you? Are you looking for someone that's living a better life? Or is, every, you know, or is it every kind of much, pretty much the same? That it doesn't compel you to live better. Right, this song that we sang, and Darren was talking about it, he says, this is the thing we should be doing, you should testify. So my question to you is, like, why do you testify? Why would you testify? What's the, why do you testify? You know, everyone here testifies, even if it's not about God. Everyone testifies like this. Oh my goodness, oh, the cake at that store is so good. Oh my God, I saw a movie the other day, the movie was so good. You've got to watch that movie. It is life-changing, right? Everyone testifies about something, right? And why do you testify? Because it's that good. It's that good. You will never understand how good faith is until you actually do something about it. You'll never taste it until you actually take action. You can't. It's impossible. Someone who's prayed for 40 days straight and fasted 40 days straight and at the end of that prayer received the answer to that prayer will know the power and the value of prayer. The person who's gone out for a thousand days to, bring, to testify and bring one person back to life, to bring them to Christ, will understand the power of testimony the power of action. The biggest problem we have is, is not that we don't have faith. It's a matter of how earnest or how sincere it actually became. That's the problem. Because since sincerely, we can be sincere in our hearts. Why? Because the, the world of the heart is so big 
that you can do anything inside your mind. You can actually make yourself good looking in your mind. You can give yourself muscles in your mind. But you can't do it in reality unless you do something about it. Living people are doing living things, which is what? A dead person is dead. Why? Because they don't move. They don't move at all. A living person is moving and they're breathing. And they have that earnestness or that sincerity to want to live. What you have to figure out to yourselves is what is, are you really living? I'm not talking just faith. I'm talking every aspect. Are you living? Because even when I say, is, is, is checking off your bucket list really living? Because most of the people on their bucket list have things that are meaningless. Like skydiving, to be honest, it's meaningless. There's nothing you get from it. It's meaningless. It's nothing that really it goes beyond, like, oh, I go skydiving. Why? Because I, I want to almost die. Why do I want to almost die? Living is what? Living is doing what? Living is wanting it so badly that you'll do the right thing. You'll do the things you're supposed to do no matter what. Faith is what? Faith will allow you to pray even when you don't want to. It'll allow you to go out and meet someone even when you're scared out of your mind. This earnestness and sincerity or the strength of your prayer, the strength of your faith is the one thing that you have to figure out. You got to figure it out because living people are actually constantly moving constantly are you living life or are you living faith properly you have to think about it at the end of 10 years what would your brother see at the end of 10 years what would your brother see at the end of it right what do you what, what would he really see at that point point? and i think that's something that all of us have to propel ourselves even more how sincere how earnest and how much you really want to live is going to determine your faith and how much you actually feel God right now. You know, if you guys close your eyes right now for a moment. In this audience, there are two types of people. Number one is there's someone who's had faith for a while. Right? Someone who's had faith or some people who had faith all their life. And this person has been living, you know, probably 10, 15, 20 years of faith and they've kind of just been breathing. Like there's like if you were to look back at your life right now, look back at all the things that you say, man, that was really living. That was really living faith. Oh man, I felt God there. It was just so amazing. Right? Oh, I felt it. My prayer was answered. I put my time in a thousand, two thousand, five thousand days and it worked. You'll know if you're that person is if you have a testimony, like a real testimony, not a testimony of what you felt, but a testimony of what you actually did. On the other hand, you'll have another person who doesn't really have a lot of faith and someone who's kind of wondering to themselves, is this real or is not real? And probably even wondering, why am I even closing my eyes at this moment? But for that, how would you ever really, really know if faith was dead or living if you've never done anything about it, if you never really did it to see, God, if you're really there, I'm going to put my life into this. Just give me one week. I'll put everything in just to see if you're there. Because in the end, how many people would really want to know, is, oh God, are you really there or not? But if you never tried, if you never lived, you'll always be left wondering in the end. You're either on one, you're either number one or number two. And what we need to do is have to realize is how living are you? Well, how many testimonies are? How many things have you actually done that you can say, wow, I did this or this? Your faith and your life is determined by what you've done and what you're doing. So that everyone can really think about this, right? Get their minds thinking, oh, am I making a testimony right now? Am I moving towards seeing if God is real or not?
I want you to pray about this and say, well, what does it have to do? Well, the number one thing is you have to find that earnestness in your heart, like sincerity. Take you where you wanna go. He can show you what you wanna know.